Hey, everyone. How's it going? Looks like we've got everybody jumping in already. And looks like I've got uh, look like I've got pickup sticks to play with here. Get these put back in the box. I guess orientation is not overly important. Hey, Clay Freeman. Rokas. Uh, normally, I do try to do a stream every 24 hours or so. Sometimes I do it a little more frequently than that. I was actually supposed to just... Camera's moved around, I don't know where I'm looking at. I was actually supposed to just come down here and check to see if there was any jobs I needed to get done, and, but I kind of got hooked into rearranging everything on the desk. Uh, the moment I've lost my third screen, the one that Jim sent me, by lost I don't mean actually physically lost in the room or anything, I just mean I haven't found a way to set it up yet on the new configuration. So um, it's the bit of a curse of having so many things on your workshop bench when you're... It's bad enough when you're just doing service work. It's even worse when you're trying to do video work as well because you're going, you've got to get your cameras set up and, uh, yeah, it gets in the way. So and what doesn't help is I've got a very narrow backing here. So I've only got about 700 millimeters from the front edge here to the back of the desk. And that will obviously change when I change into the bigger building when I get there. Let's see, yeah, let's see if autofocus is fixed. So it shouldn't be focusing. Yeah, so that's good. It's, it's staying focused on the bench now. Uh, the front should be the same, hopefully. Yep, all right, that's good. I found that there was a command line utility to do what I wanted in terms of setting the webcam parameters. So I now have that just running as a script and it just simply locks the autofocus off and that's the end of that. Hey Ed, Alan, Ludum, hey Q's been a while. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, Marguerite is here of course. I wish OBS would save the settings for autofocus for the Logitech C920s. Um, Q's, yeah, I found the, like I'm using OBS 2508 at the moment and even though it has those param parameters, it doesn't seem to remember them. But the program I've just found does at least let you set it up. So uh, let's see if I get them set up cameras. I don't know how this is going to work. With one less screen, it makes it a lot harder for me to actually organize everything here. I'm going to be a little bit lost, so bear with me. Let's see, window capture. That should do it. Well, I said window capture, not video capture. Window capture. Naturally, because it gets the wrong damn thing. Cancel. Oh. Brilliant. That just ruined everything then. Duplicate. Told you I'd muck up something. Okay, let me try this once more. Add window capture. Create new. Do not make visible while I do it so that I can actually pick the right one. That doesn't reveal everything to everybody. There we go. Okay, now we can make that visible. Because OBS has hidden half the details. Never easy. There we go. All right. Anyway, so this here is the little script I'm now using. It seems a little bit uh, over the top, but uh, because when you reboot these machines, you never know what um, which camera is going to get assigned to which device name. So the first part of my script is merely just finding out what the device name is for a particular device that I have. And once I know it, then this is the key part, this V4L2 control, and then you can just set the focus to zero. There's a whole lot of parameters you can set. Funnily enough, I can't seem to set any parameters for my uh, microscope camera. It seems to be entirely read-only. Okay, that's better. 
didn't break it that time. No. Anyway, so yeah, that's how you can do it. And the nice thing is, you, know, you just put in a little script. You run it when you boot, or you run it when you, whenever you start OBS up or whatever, and it makes it easy. Set and forget where to go. Oh, you've got Windows. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I can't help you on that. Uh, let's see, Rokos. Can you tell me what capture card you're using, and do you have any tips for one who will start to record my own videos, camera settings, and so on? Um, I actually don't have a capture card. All of my cameras are running in through USB. But if you are going to do that, then I am. Unless your motherboard has a lot of separate USB channels, I would recommend that you install maybe another USB card if you've got more than two cameras. I found that, at least on Linux, when I had multiple cameras on the same USB bus, even if they are just USB 2 grade cameras on a USB 3 bus, it would still have contention issues. So I had to split them out each to individual buses. As for colouring, lighting and all that sort of stuff, I've got no advice. I, I run with my defaults. <laughs> So I'm lucky. I wouldn't mind a capture card for the microscope camera. That actually would be useful because it does have HDMI output. Uh, the USB port on it is actually meant to be so that you can use a mouse and control the various parameters such as you know um, brightness, contrast, hue. <coughs> I can't speak much. Um, the hue. Why can't I say hue? There yeah, I can say that um, of the microscope camera because I can't seem to do it from the web controls. So, oh well. hey, Mr. Magana, Buzz Cola, Richard Bicker, I've got four USBs carefully lined up in order. Problem is, I can't remember what order was supposed to mean. Ha, <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot. Yep. Uh, the cameras I have are just Logitech. I've got a Logitech C922 and a Logitech C90. And for the broadcasting work I'm doing now, it doesn't really matter. The 922 has the advantage that it will offer 30, uh, 60 frames per second at 720p, whereas the 920 is just 30 frames per second across the board. They're, they're all um, USB 2 cameras. So yeah, I just realized I got this damn desktop. That, that's pretty good. That's actually in sync. So. But I'm killing that anyway. Let's see, overhead, you're dead. Dunk. There we go. Hey Sinclair, how's it going? Hey Circuit Monkey, welcome. Uh, the cameras are all USB 2, yes. So that is probably why you need to have a separate channel for each, because when they do run 1080p, they are pretty much running at full capacity as far as I know, so I don't think you can have too many multiple ones on the same bus. Is 60 hertz important to have? Uh, 60 frames per second I think is nice. It definitely adds that element of um, realism to the video. You don't really notice it until you start watching more 60 or 50 hertz um, frames per second videos. And it just gives that fluidity, if that's a word. I wish I could run at 60. I definitely have the upload bandwidth for it, but I would have to upgrade all of my cameras. And certainly the machine would have to then have some sort of capture card will most likely have a capture card but definitely I would have to bump up to something like an i7 or a high-end Ryzen or something like that to be able to encode at that sort of rate. Hey Sabatino, Alan Lou. On the back that looks like my house alarm battery. What? Oh yeah, the um, the Yesu battery there. That thing there, yep. That's a 12, uh, 12 volt, 7 amp hour pack. What distribution and window manager are you using? It's Ubuntu 20.04 at the moment, and the window manager is what we call Fluxbox. It's, yeah, it is strictly a very minimalist type window manager. It's definitely not what you'd call a desktop manager because there's no desktop. It's just Windows, and that's it. So, run 8K. Now, oh, there's an idea. That'd be nice. Yeah. 4K. Uh, there would, is one advantage of using a 4K camera, say like a Logitech Brio or something like that, is that you then have the option to either zoom or selectively crop the areas that you have of interest. So you can keep it to 1080 um, in terms of size, but you have a much greater canvas to work within. 
Hey Claude Denis, what GPU do you have? I don't have a GPU, this is just running off an Intel i5-8400, just straight, plain, ordinary. My system runs at around about 35% utilization at 30 frames per second. Do you have additional lighting on the bench? I have, um, see, three strip lights up above. I've got one just consumer 13 watt LED bulb. Then there's two 5,000 Kelvins behind me. And then on the desk itself, there is a little um, under here. Let me see if I can show you overhead. Under here, there is a um, studio lighting type thing. It's only about, uh, I can't even remember how many lumens it is. It's not a massive amount of lumens, but it does provide a very localized light here. What do you think of LXQT? I haven't tried it, sorry. Yep. Hey Greg. Hey English. Glad you made a deposit. Yes, uh, that was actually really good the other night. We were just ticking along and we went over the threshold. So we now have that portion locked away. The trick though is that if we use all of that deposit amount and put it into the bank, then we'll have no money at all left for ourselves. So now we have to save up a little bit more so that we have a buffer for just life in general. Uh, so it'd be nice to just walk into the bank on Monday and say, here you go, here's the money, give us the loan, but we have to wait a little bit longer. Do you green screen like Jessa? Eh, I'm not a fan of the green screen much because there's always the artifacting and things like that. And I'm just not a fan of it. I'd rather just clean up my bench behind me. That would be a better option, don't you think? Hey, Toes Tech. Cues, I'm building a massive solar charging power station to go and run. That's a good idea. I need to do that here. Once I've got the house, I'm doing that. What are the magnet screw mats called? Or what? Uh, let's see. What do you... Talking about James, the let's see, overheads. I'm trying to think. Because all I do is I just go to eBay or a stationery store and I simply buy sheets of this stuff, and that is uh, printable fridge magnet label stuff. That's all it is. Uh, yeah, and so I usually buy a pack of 10 A4 size, which is pretty good and then chop it up into quarters and each quarter handles a typical iPhone for doing a screen repair um, so yeah it, it, and it's got well, half the stuff isn't magnetic but it's got an adhesive backing on it that I never take off so that's all that is G2 icon oh yeah this yep this is the this is the i5 one which of course did the i5s as well I use this on a lot of phones anytime even the sixes occasionally anytime I sort of need to do a bit of a uh, chassis pull or something like that then that works well I did get the iPhone 6 one with the curved uh, the curved die on it but honestly it never quite worked out well because you never quite have enough meat on the chassis itself to grab onto in order to be able to correct the corner they still are good tools. I definitely made my money back on them, that's for sure, plenty of times. The one that never worked out was the chassis straightener. That was just a piece of junk. Um, okay, to be fair, I bought the clone one, but I figured if they're cloning the G-Tool, they're probably, the G-Tool is probably just as useless. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think if I've got anything I need to look at tonight. James, you should be able to just find them in a stationery store. Just a general fridge magnet, adhesive type stuff. Okay, it's, it's junk here. Bit of protective shield. Uh, this is my 2936. Right. I do think I definitely need the third screen, but I think... <sighs> What I might do is right now I've got strip back to here. Right now I have got a screen just below here that's a 20 inch, and a screen just up here that's also a 20 inch, just a, a 22 inch rather, standard 1080s. I think what I'll do is I'll actually put a screen off to the side, either another 20 or something, and it'll have it 
coming around to the side. But I'm finding if I put it up any higher, it's too difficult for me to use. Uh, you know, I don't like doing this so much. It's easier you know, to go left and right. The other option is maybe I can put it on top or in front of the what do you call this thing? The the fume hood. But it vibrates a lot, so when it's running, you're not going to be able to see things properly. Okay, cues, you take care. The yeah, magnetic mat, fridge magnet mat, um, printable fridge magnet, yeah, anything like that. You once you find it, you go, oh yeah, that stuff. Yeah. Alrighty, let's see if I do have anything I need to fix up while I'm in here. It wasn't. Yeah, I said. I just thought I wanted to try to see if the streaming would work. Ooh, someone bought a copy of Flexboard View. Awesome. It's always very nice when people buy copies of Flexboard View. I was supposed to get this up and running. This is a, I think it's about 1400 lumen, 4200 Kelvin strip. And I'm going to have to go and look at the data sheet for this because I can't get it to run with my power supply. So I don't know whether it's meant to run at a much higher voltage to still get the current. I mean, I said it, it is current limited to about 900 milliamps is what it wants. And so I put that up on the power supply and set the voltage to the go wherever the maximum it wanted to go to achieve that 900 milliamps. And it wouldn't fire off. So I don't know. I've done something wrong. Stuffed if I know what though. So I'll have to go check the data sheet. Probably should have done that originally. Hopefully I can cut that in half too because I would really like to have two sort of like foot wide strips just directly above. Let's see how we go. So many experimenting things to do and probably by the time I have done it all and got it just how I want it, that's when I'll start building the shed. Okay, 36 volts. 36 volts. Bugger. Okay, well that, uh, Alex, that uh, kind of is just out of the range of my power supply, which of course is 30 volts. Well, I guess I'll just be buying a proper LED driver for that one then. A little bit of extra cost, but that's okay. I thought at 30 volts it might be marginal, you know, it might just start to fire off the LEDs, but I guess not. Ah, uh, come on, Paul. What do you got? What do you got for the audience? The audience is here and you're not delivering on entertainment. <sighs> I'm going to get thumbs down everywhere. Ooh, that's right. That's what I wanted to try. Okay, I have got something here. Something that's been languishing for way too long. And the person who owns it has been very good. Accommodating me being very bad. Oh, oh shoot. Damn it, I've got boxes piled up everywhere right now because of me shifting things around. I got a 2915 or an earlier one, I can't remember. And it's got a crack in the screen, and I really don't want to split the screen. I mean, they're not that bad to do on these models the 12 series, the 1278, 86, 97. But it's still not something I want to do. So I was going through my trash, and I found that I had. A, um, I had a screen, and I'm fairly sure it might fit. I'm not 100% sure. I don't know what the variations are between the particular years of the 1286 series. Because I know, like the 1278, you can't always fit the different screens between each other. Ow. Anyway, so I'm pull this open and have a look. And switch over to the overhead. There we go bit dim, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure what I can. Do. Maybe I can. Let's see. Properties. Overhead. Oh, now you bring out the auto. That's crazy. OBS can control the autofocus. But it does a suckable job at it. Now you decide you want to work? That's crazy. Whatever they've done with the OBS, ah, oh jeez, I've effed it up. Oh, 
My life. No, it's killed the camera. Damn you. Great. OBS has killed that camera, so now I'm going to have to try and reinstate it. Bloody hell. I hope there's a way I can disable OBS from actually doing things like that. Because what a pain. And it's back. All right, we're gonna have to deal with the darkness, I'm afraid. Sorry, folks. Darkness has taken over. I will probably have to create my own little program to control all the web camera parameters. Something that doesn't crash just because I decided to dare go near them. Where are my tools? Oh, I'll put them over there. Okay. What do I want? Phillips. Should do it. This is going to be a slow process. Yes, darkness indeed. Is that? Yeah, it's the right brightness when I put my hand in front of it. This is the downside of having a white bench top. So um, if you ever are creating a you know a bench top and you're going to do video work, don't use white. It just really puts things way out. You can never. It's either you set the brightness up and the white just burns its way through, or you set it down and everything is just dark. 240p, well, that's not good. Um, Steve, no, the stream itself should be okay. It doesn't look like I've got any... Let's have a look at what the stats say. Stats are perfect on this side, so if you've got issues, it's YouTube or your supply of data. Nice cat. What cat? Which cat are you talking about? I don't see... I've got a few. Someone didn't take every screw out. Let's blame the darkness on that one. Okay. Right, so this is a triple three O machine. That's right, now I remember. I want to see if the screen I have a horrible feeling it does not Yeah, this is not a triple three O screen. Bugger. At the very, I should make disconnect that battery. <laughs> um, right from the start, so this has got the flat press metal type lock bar, whereas this has got the wire bar. So I can pretty much guess that everything else is not going to work out. I've got another one, another chassis here, so I'll have a look and see if that matches. I only ever recall having one triple three O come through here. Yes, another... wait... yeah. Yeah, I don't think that will work. I don't believe I can put a 2915 display on a 3330, is that correct? Pizza delivery going past the house. Awesome. Unfortunately, not for me. Not so awesome. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey Adrian, why are repair techs all cat people? Not all of us are, Pat. Um, Tim, uh, Tim of TCRS is definitely not. He's a he's got a little pug. Um, she's a cute little pug. Yeah. So we got an answer. Where's Pernov when I need him? I 
need Pionov to tell me if I can indeed put the triple three O and if I can put a twenty nine fifteen display on a triple three O. Because if he doesn't tell me, then I'm just going to do it and find out. And if it goes horribly wrong, well, it'll, it'll be his life that gets forfeited. Prolux, you only have nine cats. Whoa! What sort of you got? That's pretty cool. Nine cats. That's pretty good game. That would be a bit of a fun handful. I know it can be quite trying at times. That's one word to use for it. Jack Russell's for Ed. They're close to being cats. <laughs> and it's true. I mean, in general, cats don't need as much care. But the cats, funnily enough, do actually require... Uh, they do require still quite a fair bit of psychological attention and things like that. They may pretend that they don't, but the reality is that they do. Edrabara, it's been a while. Uh, Pam, I'm glad the software helps you. Is that uh, Flex or is that OBS? Either way, I'm I'm fine either way, by the way. I'm not fielding people out or anything. Let's see, what are you? Oh wow, you're a T6 for the hinges. Neat. It saves me another driver. One with three legs, a pure white, and she's deaf. There are no pet cats, only pet humans. Well, that is true too. Ah, Keith McDermott, three cats for you guys. We have one, of course, that is diabetic. Uh, hopefully, the amazing thing with, with cats is that they can actually stop being diabetic if given the right treatment and things like that. Ours is most likely diabetic due to stress situation. And so there is some degree of chance that he will recover. i got to change his glove. This is maddening. Should still fit. All oh, right, thanks, Alan. Well, we'll find out, won't we, Alan? What do you do? What? What do you do with OBS? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Any info on that thermal camera software, Jimmy? We're still we're having driver issues. Uh, the Microsoft did something after I think it was Windows Seven with the driver model and it made the driver API that I'm using the libUSB not work properly anymore and the Fleur camera is a composite device and for some reason no matter what we try Windows or something in the subsystem keeps just incorrectly assigning the endpoints so when I try to actually query to get the data off it under Windows, it just drops dead. Linux, on the other hand, works perfectly fine. So if you've got Linux, it works. If you don't have Linux, it doesn't. Oh, oh right, you're, I only know you. Oh, okay, right. Okay. OBS is the open source version, as it were. It's not quite true, really. OBS is what I forked from to create FlexBoard View. And the difference between OBS and FlexBoard View is that OBS does not have the PDF coupling and a whole bunch of other stuff. But it's still a perfectly good piece of software if you're just a casual repairer. You know, I always say, you know, if you know, people say, should I get OBS or should I get FlexBoard View? It's a case of pick the, if you're not,
do more than one or two MacBooks a month, then you may as well just stick with Open uh, Ob OBV. Sorry about that. Yeah, stick with OBV. Open, open board view. But if you're doing MacBooks repairs on a more commercial type nature and time matters, then at that point I certainly do recommend just switching over to Flexboard view. Hey Michael, Kiram, saying hello. Well, hello to you, good sir. Yeah, thanks Robert Thundernan. Yeah, just after I realised I was having a brain fart there. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. It's quite a lot of us out actually would want to be saying open broadcast uh, open board view, but we end up using the open broadcaster acronym. For the love of God, don't break the screen. Hey Winfield, oh God, I hate that snap over moment. It's not so bad on these ones, but when you're dealing with the retina screens and things like that, and you have to do that sort of roll roll up and uh, flip out type thing, it's pretty nightmarish. You start wondering, am I going to end up with a very expensive job here or what? What about WinUSB? Yeah, my Sarah, that is actually how we're going through it. But you see, I'm using LibUSB as the programming API um, library, library. But the driver that we're using is, as far as I know, WinUSB. Uh, I'm not specifically up to the full details of it. That's something I'm leaving to the person who's Okay, I don't think these actually do match up. No, the, I don't think these match up at all. There's a serious alignment difference here of around about four and a half millimeters, or maybe not. Uh, yeah, there is. Uh, no, there's a difference here. Okay, maybe without the clutch cover, it works. Well, there's a strong magnet involved somewhere in there. But with the clutch cover, it's not going to work. See, if you align these up, then the chassis ends here, the clutch cover ends there. So there's this offset of about four or five millimeters that can't be compensated for unless this slides across like that because Paul's an idiot. I don't even know how that got moved. Yeah, yeah Paul just put some. Chip, 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 chip. I think I should just shut up. Okay, what do you know? It actually d does almost fit. <laughs> Break my poor fingertips. Hot glue, yeah. I think the screen fits, but not the cover. Wait, what? What do you mean, not the cover? Oh, the clutch cover, right, yeah. Okay. Suck in the chest. Get one screw in. Man, this is like... Trying to fit the head back on my car. So I get one head bolt in and just try and leave the rest in. It's not a good way of doing that. Guaranteed to have alignment issues down the road. Okay. 
Whew. Yes, it's all about learning experience. Yeah, well, I'm not a mechanic by any means, so uh, doing a car head change was not much fun. It's not the first head change I've done on vehicles, but mostly I used to do motorbikes. Cars, yeah, heavier, more awkward. Okay, you have theoretically have got more space, but in reality, I found you don't. Yeah, this isn't going to fit, I don't think. Yep, I know, I know. I said that was the clutch cover, but this might actually be legit. I think this is one where you have to shave off an edge. Yeah, now nah, that's not going to fit, folks. Thanks for playing, but that's not going to fit. Now, the way around that is I desolder that and put one on, but no. No, I'm not doing that. Sorry. So much for that. Late to the stream. Hey, Ron Rogers, greetings from the Union, Missouri. Good old NOYCX. Do you say O or zero? Sent your pictures on Discord. Yeah, it wasn't too much work. I mean, really. It, okay, I'm just going into Discord at the moment. Hey, Max, how's it going? Did you sh uh, you must have shaved off the connector or something. You had to have shaved off the shave that connector or something down, right? Anyway. That's all right. So what it means is basically I have to take this screen which I can't see now. Man, I really do miss having three screens. Um, you didn't? Okay, well, this one definitely doesn't match. So you can see it's it's got this crack in the front glass. So I'll just have to take the glass off and put a new one on. That's basically all that's going to come down to. I just really wasn't wanting to do something like that. Is this all slow and stuttery? Is this slow and stuttery? Let me know. Once you remove the plastic, the same engine. Hmm. A little stuttery, yeah. Yeah, I thought so too. Okay, I'll be right back. I do apologize, I um, forgot to hit the start streaming button. And it's quick. I was fortunate I was playing with the cameras this is what happened I went to reset the camera and unfortunately well not unfortunately fortunately my wife just happened to put her head through the door and presented a nice tomato and cheese toasty for me oh yeah this is homemade Genuine tomato and cheese. It's 
very... It's the sort of stuff that you love to eat at close to midnight. Um, we did have ham, but I think it was a little over... A little too close to expired, and we were quite paranoid here about any sort of products expiring. So we tend to throw out a lot of stuff, unfortunately. I've only had one experience of life of eating contaminated food and I never wish to never ever wish to go back to that again. And besides, there's nothing wrong with a good tomato and cheese toasty. A bit of salt and pepper in there. This wholemeal bread. Vegetarian and it's nice. See, what's that? People are rather using uh, we're using eBay rather than Amazon for what, selling or buying. Uh, it's been a while, Tom, since I've had a egg and cheese toasty. We used to make them a fair bit as kids. Um, or just simply egg toasties in in, <coughs> in the waffle makers and whatnot. Mm. That really actually did hit the spot. It's good food. I find these days I'm eating a lot less meat than I ever used to. That's night we had spaghetti and uh, it's probably about our third spaghetti in two weeks or so. And we just keep knocking down the amount of uh, beef in it each time because we've got it right now. But um, yeah, it's just too much meat and it's nice to actually enjoy the, the sauce and the pasta. Yeah, I'd say in a given week probably, uh, probably about half our meals are now vegetarian. It's not intentional, it's just the way we prefer to eat. Yeah, these tomatoes, are, they're pretty fresh. They're fresh off the vine sort of thing. Alright, let's get some gloves back on. Breaks over. Back to slave land. I mean, you can get some awful, uh, applies for all things, but you can get some truly awful tomatoes. One thing I've noticed, um, I don't know whether it's just in America or what, but uh, whenever I watch videos of people in America buying food and making things like this, everything is massive. It's like you get this three quarter or two pound onion and one pound tomato and things like that and it's like wow why why do you make it so big it's like it's almost like you're diluting the flavor across the whole extra size item that you got there rather than just having a compact onion or tomato that is packed full of flavor i don't know maybe they are perfectly tasty i'm just unsure Is there, I had a Whopper from Burger King, the worst tomatoes I've ever seen this week. All that, like, pale and half green and things like that. Mm. Oh. Oh. Bending down is a little bit painful sometimes. Alright, what have I got? I had a board here that came up with... If I can find it again. Huh. It was coming up with Thunderbolt 2 issues, and I mean, we don't care about Thunderbolt eh, as a general rule, but I can't really use the board in a consumer, you know, replacement unless, you know, I'm happy with it. Okay, what the heck's wrong with you? EFI. Oh, this is the one that I have to 
put a new BIOS on, right? I can't do that tonight. Apparently I've sent through all the information to me and I've just been a lazy git and haven't actually done anything with it, so I do apologise, Pernoff. Anyway, I don't know if this will actually result in any sort of reworking or soldering or anything, but I'm just not sure why it would come up with Thunderbolt lanes issues, but we'll have a look. I'm here for the BIOS. So you're going to bang into that. Beautiful. Now, that sandwich is tasty enough that I want another one. Okay, Thunderbolt. I mean, your main chip is under there. Overall, it looks pretty damn clean, so I'm not sure what's going on. There's something under there, maybe? Still got a i still got to find a replacement for my beloved spudger, this one here. Now I know that a lot of people say, it's like, oh, well, they're everywhere, you can get those anytime, whatever, I know how to get them, and the, oops, that just went flying. Um, the problem is that 99% of these spudgers that you get are chrome plated, or they've got a plating on them. This has no plating on it, it is just straight through single alloy of steel or whatever no plating okay the plating adds thickness as well it doesn't seem like it's much but it does add thickness and of course it flakes off so i have not been able to find a genuine replacement for this type of spudger where it's just a single piece of metal no plating you know the shape you know what they look like and everything but yeah i can't find them that are that thin and yeah yeah, Thunderbolt issues. I thought maybe if it was complaining about the lanes, there might be something in there, but nothing I can really see. I wonder if maybe in the connector. I don't know if it's stainless steel. I guess it is some form of stainless steel, but um, I don't know exactly what type. Looks like there has been corrosion in there, but the pins themselves look pretty good, so I wouldn't be blaming that. And I've bought, I have bought quite a few of these trying to find the replacement. So far, no luck. Let's see, eBay item, to, if it's got a gloss to it, it's going to be, it's going to be yet another, um, what do you call it, chrome one. eBay, oh, come on. Boo. Can't find it. Dental elevator. Could try looking at those. Maybe I should go back to the dentist. Copy paste it. I did. I copy paste it. Search. I put it into... Oh man, you're going to have to make me do the hard way. Find an existing e eBay item, then I change it to that new number. Ask Alex Steele to make me one, that'd be cool. That would genuinely be cool. They look pretty close, Paul. The flat spatula and all that. Unfortunately, they're not the round style, but I mean, I could probably cope with that. 
they do look a little th uh, yeah I know I know Prater you win that you win that round if this doesn't work then I'm going to have to take extraordinary measures crap extraordinary measures are about to be partaken Uh, paste the lick down. Uh, paste the lick. <laughs> paste the link, damn it, Brader. Core Electronics has a stainless steel one. Really, Buddha Tech. Okay. Let's see. Core Electronics. Com.au. Shop. Tools, 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 tools. A, B, and C. Oops, sorry. Chris Long. Uh, spudge, spudge, spudge. Spudge. Let's see. That, the core one. Hard to say. In some ways it could be real, in some ways it may be f not. They say it's stainless steel. They don't have, no one ever mentions if it's chrome plated. Well, I guess I'll spend the 12 bucks and find out. I guess we'll find out. Eh? Alright. In the meantime, I'm looking for a, a damned... Thunderbolt crap. Let's have a look under the big chip. Let's see. By the way, if you are repairing things, these boards, 99.9999999% of the time, nothing under here is anything you need to worry about. If you think the fault is under here, it's probably not. Yeah, that looks perfectly fine. Uh, how's Sunday? Oh, well, I haven't checked yet. I haven't been out of the room. I'm still in the TARDIS. So time hasn't yet become relevant. All right, let's put this in a chassis and see what we can find out. At least we can actually run ASD on this one. Have ourselves a nice cheat. Plug in this marvelous cable extension so I don't have to shove this into the chassis. I suppose it'd be an ideal thing to put a fan on this, considering it is going to be running ASD, which may take more than two minutes. Chris, shouldn't you be working, or what are you, just loafing around on a Saturday morning, having a good life? Okay, turn the power onto that. I need to get my appropriate boot. Let's see. It's very rare for me to have both my ASD drives here. I think, what am I after? ASD 155, or is it? 152, I can't remember which one it is. Let me go and check. SD reference list. And this will be a 
2013 or 2014 MacBook Air. MacBook Air, 13 inch, 2012, nope, so it's not 150. 155, no, 156, 156, okay. Hey, Mr. DeBull. Imagine having the brain where you can remember this sort of stuff just off by heart rather than having to use Google. Wouldn't that be something? You know what also be something? Is realizing that you need a keyboard to do this so you have to put it into the chassis damn you you filthy filthy damn oh wait can i get away with that yes take the chipmunk out put that in there get an external keyboard and mouse ha yeah, there's a will, there's a way. Not that one. And just hope that I'm pressing the right key for the task. Wrong mouse ball, wrong mouse. <sighs> Close up show no cream. Uh, well, I'll take a shot. I'll um, I'll get one of those ones from Core Electronics or whatever it was. I'm guessing this key isn't the right key. Oh yeah, the um, Apple T2 thing and all that. Yeah, uh, that's what Apple does. Yeah, that's not going to boot to the right one, so we'll just cancel that. I'm trying to think what key I need to press. One of these. Oh, uh, when I code, I tend to refer to web pages a lot as well so there's um, it's still entirely normal for me was this wi-fi card not working what? please don't make me have to plug in this to the keyboard flag is command yeah. Oh yeah. Actually, yeah. I saw that with the cattle. That that's the one bit that does get me is the fact that they did it on a fifteen oh two and a Catalina decided to kill access to the Wi-Fi. That I wasn't expecting. That is definitely a concern. Yep. Okay, but if you go back to Mojave, it works. All right, well, that's not too bad then. I mean, it's not the greatest, but Mojave is, you know, it's a pretty good system, so. Aha, uh -huh, it was this alt key here. I knew it would eventually work. Take that, Apple. But here's the fun thing. It does not show me the numbers. God damn. How am I supposed to know which one's 155? If I, if I, what the, is there any way you can get, is there any way you can get it to show you what the number is? Is that right now, every one of them is just labeled EFI boot, EFI boot, EFI boot. On other systems when I boot, it will actually show me the numbers, so it's depending on the system, but I can't get it to show. Change the drive icon instead. Plug in to a Mac rename. What? Well, the names are only things like 155 OS. You know, they're very short, compact names. 
Yeah, alt did work, but it was the, I had to use the other alt. I had to use the alternative alt. Ha! <laughs> yeah, so I don't know which one of these is 155. And it appears as hover over doesn't work. No information comes up when I click on it. Interesting. It has a recycle. Oh, this sucks. Right click doesn't do diddly squat. So I just gotta. Um, I can't seem to change the display mode either. Count and enter. Yeah, well, I don't think I'm gonna do that. But I'm going to say you. Fourth one in. I could try to rename them just sort of like have sort of, I don't know, the cursor keys do not do anything else. No, nothing else is happening. I said I was after 155. I think it was, or 156. 156 I was after, damn it. This is probably going to crash. That's probably not the right one. Plug into Linux, cut and paste, you correct EFI. <laughs> yeah. Fifth one then, what? The fifth element. Yeah. This is taking a little while. Holy crap, I actually didn't end up. I got 156. How's that for luck? That was pure backsideness. Pure, utter, unadulterated backside. I don't think I need the keyboard anymore. My lottery ticket. I just used the lottery ticket. The luck's used. That's the thing. It's like, congratulations, you achieved what you were trying to do. You don't get another chance now. That was your lottery ticket. You instead used it to boot a Mac into the right ASD. How do you feel, sir? That's the way it goes. All right, we just want to look at... Um, we basically just want to... Do uh, disable them all. Okay, they're all disabled. We just want Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt port interface, and see what happens. Start testing. You watch, it's not going to even fail this time. It's going to be. Pfft. At least I think that was luck. I mean, I don't imagine that it self-selects out of that boot list the right one, because it wouldn't know what it's booting. <laughs> How can it know what it's booting until it's booted? Ah, oh, boy. Just did a fire stick ad blink while watching video. Much easier than typing for 20 minutes. What? What's a fire stick ad blink? I don't know what that is. Why did that just die? Well, it's still drawing 80, so it might come back. I don't recall having any sleep tests in there, unless one of the tests is to sleep, see if Thunderbolt comes back on waking up. Guess we'll find out. Add blink it pushes APKs to fast. Oh, Fire Stick, that's that um, Netflix type thing. I think, is it? I can't remember. No, I don't think it's a screen test, I think it's a sleep test. 
Yeah, there we are. We're back up and running again. Oh joy! It passed its tests after telling me before it had Thunderbolt Lane issues. Well, I sure as hell now I'm not going to use this because it's not going to. Yeah, you know that's going to go wrong. Uh, let's see sensors. What's this products? No, we don't want sleep wake. It won't let me click the memory test. Why not? There we go. But yeah, nothing instills confidence like a test that comes back good after it was not good before. Yes, indeed. Start testing again. Ooh. Here we go. SMC reports an error in one or more of the critical sensors. You won't tell me which one, of course, will you? Test failed. It doesn't tell me which... Oh, wait, here we go. Uh, SMC... Critical sensor check test. It's not telling me which sensor. Touchpad. That would make sense, actually. Thank you. Well, we'll see how we go again. Shut up, Chris. I already got told it was touchpad. What are you, trying to ride in on someone else's coattails there so you can seem like you're intelligent? My goodness. I thought you were superior to that. Oh, well, this time. Damn it. This thing is just driving me mad, so I'm going to have to just put it into the chassis so it stops whining like a little prat. Whining like Chris Long. Hey, 3X. Oh, yeah, I mean, I can type faster than Lewis, even. I can do 200 bad words per minute. Now, on the other hand, if you do want properly written words, well, that's a whole different story, and I will not win that one. Hey, Micromage Repair, how's it going? Thanks for dropping in. We're just wasting time going through my stock of crap that I haven't properly tested, and I'm utilizing everybody here for my own gain to keep me entertained while I'm doing this sort of boring work. Oh yeah, I forgot my speaker is broken on that one. Yeah, Tony, it was. Uh, it would have been going into the sleep mode or whatever. But I just figured I may as well give this a full set to uh, work with rather than just keep messing around, achieving nothing. Okay, my backlight doesn't work on this one either, the keyboard. <laughs> This chassis's been through a bit of a bit of the wars. And there's something down in there actually. Piece of junk. How the heck did you get down there? Get that out. Lewis roasted you on stream. He called you a bad technician. Really? That was his insult? A bad technician? Wow. Man, he's really losing it. He's not um he's not coming up with good insults anymore. He's just he's just lashing out wildly now. Okay, I wonder what there was a bit of rock in there. So I wonder what that controlled. Did you switch to Moscow time? What? What's Moscow time? Is that when the red wave is going to come and get us? I thought it was going to be China. Erica is taking all his energy. Oh, well, yeah, that, that's a good thing. 
It's nice to see Lewis with Erica. Let's see, 34, 37. Yeah, I mean, Lewis has managed to highly offend all previous attempts for him to have some kind of relationship, but um, Erica seems to be able to put up with his crap. So I think that uh, is worthy of applause. Oh man, I really need to get the third screen again. Okay, um, let's see, two down below the parallel. Alright, they look like they shouldn't be anything. All they are, they're just audio. Let's see, this one, the first one is audio power enable, and the second one is alternate audio LDO enable, so alternate low dropout. Whatever, so th that's not anything to do with Thunderbolt. The funny thing is, yeah, Toothbrush wouldn't have gotten that one out. That was really lodged in there. You can see the indent it's made. Uh, there's nothing in there anymore. That's it's been knocked out, but it was a like a sp it was a small rock. It was jammed in there. Uh, continue on with rebuilding this so that we can test it before we all die of extreme boredom. I suppose we should put a battery in there. Let's see if I can find my crappiest battery possible. No, you look too fancy to be a crappy, but it does have my shop name on it, so I guess it must be mine. I do not have a Wi-Fi... Once again, it becomes treacherous for me to walk through the room. Having a lot of containers to hold all your stuff is great until you pull those containers out of all the shelves that were holding the containers and then they're sitting all over the floor and then that's not so great. Okay, if this battery falls out, I'm going to be a little bit upset. Let's see. Oops. So it was the fourth one, was it? I think it was the fourth one. I've got the Wi-Fi card in there now. Come on, 34, 37. You can do it. Boot. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. There's a fourth one. One, two, three. Whoa. What happened there? See that? That just dropped dead on me. Still drawing warm. What's going on there? Nope, that's not supposed to do that. Dead CPU now did an L turn up. Yeah, let's try that again, folks. I think I may have to just make this a donor board. Because you can be guaranteed, if I put this in someone's machine as a replacement, it's, um, yeah. Maybe it wasn't the fourth, maybe it was something else. Maybe it was the fifth? Nope, definitely not the fifth. 
May the fifth, may the sixth be. Yeah. Hello, battery, my old friend. Okay, let's try the fourth again. Yeah, w when stuff like that happens, you get a little bit inclined to sort of go, ah, oh, it was just a freak event sort of thing. Yeah, it won't happen again. But honestly, I have found that anytime something like that happens, it's pretty much a bit of an omen to tell you, no, you can't give this back to the customer because that is not going to work. You're you shut down your... I didn't shut down my computer. You shut down my computer. Let's see. If you do nothing... What? Okay, let's have a look. Whatever. Honestly, telling me I shut down the computer. Yeah, when you have that sort of stuff happens, you can be guaranteed it's going to keep happening as soon as you get back to the customer. But you get tempted because you sort of think, oh, well, one, I want the money, two, I want to get it out of the job queue. So, um, yeah, they just bite you in the butt for sure. <laughs> MacBooks do make good tea trays, do they? No. I didn't know they had the ability to make tea trays. All this time I thought they were just good computers, but what do you know? They make tea trays. Well, I have to look for that now. Next time I go looking out for a tea tray made by Mac. Okay, what did you just fail with? Sensor reading above alarm point. VPOR, PP bus, sensor reads within operating, blah, blah, blah. Okay, why is that PP bus reading above? Which one is it? VPOR. Not sure which one that one is. Thirty-four, thirty-seven. Search on the schematic for VP0R. VP0R. Honestly, it sounds like some funny language. Oh, dude. PP bus voltage sensor naval filter. SMC sense power naval. Isn't that related to the charger being more than original? You mean like the fact that I'm pumping 18 volts rather than 16 and a half? You think it might be that? Alright, well let's try that. Let's, um, I can just change the... Change it down to 16 and a half. Except not 16, I want 16 and a half. Okay. Let's try that again. Start. We can see whether it needs me to reset the whole. Did it just reboot? You little scum tag. Oh, I guess that's what I meant by restart. <laughs> Crap. Who would have thought a button actually meant what it meant? Can't see? Oh, good. Ow. Okay. Uh, Chris, come on now. Can't have you and Lewis fighting over me. Over my stunning Australian body mate. 
complete with the pack of dingoes. If there's smoke, it's just because it was non-essential magic smoke. It had too much and need to be donated to another board. Okay, restart. No, don't press restart. Start. <laughs> Is the smoke a new Mac feature? No, no, they've had it for a long time. PCs have also got that feature too, I found. It still failed. It's still sensor above alarm point. No, mm, it's interesting. It's the same one too. All right. Yes, yeah, so you have to collect the magic smoke. That's always fun. Thing is, it's the SMC that decides this. Let's see, maximum V out is 3.3. .3. It actually lists 3.3 .3 as a maximum on the 19.77 input. So this actually can go to 19.77 by design. So and naturally, all the test points are on the other side of the board. Bugger. Not enough power. No, it should be fine at this level now. Okay, we'll see if we can measure it. Q. Yeah, really, Paul, you really want to take that risk? You really want to take this risk? Poking around things that you really shouldn't be. Put my glasses on. Okay, Travis, thanks for dropping in. Sorry it wasn't the most entertaining one tonight. Maybe, and unfortunately tomorrow certainly won't be entertaining because it's Sunday. You can't do entertainment on Sunday. That's illegal according to the church. Okay, which flipping pin am I looking at for bottom one? If things go... Then I blame. No, that can't be the right. Things are not lining up here. Some crappy board view software. Look at that. Oh no wonder, it's because this, what I'm trying to probe is just way, way too small, there's no way I can probe this. Why is Clark Kent on stream? Because Superman had to go save the day. Okay, I'll probe this, but I have to do it over the edge. Microscope cam camera seems a little better tonight for some reason. Just seemed clearer. Okay, so this is the V-Sense. Eight and a half. Oh, oh right, that's not the V-Sense. That's the input that I was looking at. So we've got 8.5. That shouldn't have a problem at all. 8.5, that's fine. That should not be erroring. Is the battery charged? No, I'd say it's not. Let's see, what's our PP bus? Yeah, 8.6. That's, that's bang on what it should be, so... Yeah. So maybe we do have an SMC issue on this one. Hey Jill, how's it going? Alright, well that, that's one error. I'll just tell it to ignore that. And we'll carry on and see what else it can come up with. Continue. 
Don't hit the shutdown. Start testing. Reflow SMC and friends. Oh, jeez, no. Uh, if I'm going to do anything with SMC, I'm going to reball it. Like, I, I even got a bag of balls. So nice little. These are from the other night when I spilled all over the over the um, tray. So I'm going to keep using these until I run out. That's my new... Uh, that's pretty cool. Those balls have got electrostatic issues in there. Oh wow, that is actually bloody awesome. Sorry. That's worth me actually putting this to the side to have a look at those balls closer. It's not like we're going to miss out on any errors. They'll be there when we come back. It's far more interesting to look at these dancing balls. Okay. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's entertainment. For a nerd. There's got to be super staticky in there or something. <laughs> They're not liking that. Like, let us out of here, man. Let us out. Come on, shake his up. Shake it up. Man, I could probably spend a little too long watching this all day. That's pretty cool. No, it's not an anti staker bag, it's a static bag. Guaranteed to have lots and lots of static in it. It's not because the it's not because there's flat surfaces or anything there, it's just they are genuinely sticking using electrostatic and repulsive forces there, so that's what makes it so interesting. Uh, take that quantum theory. That's pretty cool. Do your balls store the static charge and kill the SMC on contact? Only if I pay them appropriately for the hit. Okay, there we go. Bring him back. So we got the one error come up. I better make sure that I mark this stream as being extremely boring. That I think was definitely a go to sleep test. So yeah, you're gonna have to put up waiting for that now. Put a magnet on and play with them. I don't know if the mag would actually affect anything on them. It might if they're moving around, but if they're in that sort of electrostatic, literal static condition, then probably not much is going to change. Battery... what? Yeah. Oh, right, you mean like... Yes. So very close. Thank you, good sir. Here we go. Give it a little bit of a tilt. <laughs> Stop us. Having a nightmare. Now I've definitely got to come up with a third screen. The other way around I can get, if I don't want to use a third screen, is to actually have the top screen up here as one of those ultra wides, so sort of like, uh, what is it, 2560 by 1080 or something like that, just to give me that extra area where I can use it to put all the uh, things like OBS and the meter and the microscope control and the um, power supply up, but all that sort of stuff. Do you ever feel like you're tormenting or torrenting a file and it's stuck at 50% with no seeds? Bull stake. What the? Chris, where do you come up with this crap? 
I can't even relate. When you're in the stream, you're going to stir Lewis. No, I don't think I need to today. Judging from his little rant video about Apple last night, I don't think I need to do anything. Can you try with an original charger? Well, there is, is an original charger cable, so... I'm just kind of curious to see if the Thunderbolt Lane thing comes up again. I hear if you pull the balls on the board while it's on the solder. What? Oh, while it is on, solder find the broken connections and fix it. Oh, wow. Well. Chris, have you been hanging around the Please Bro forums too much? And you've been giving out the advice, haven't you? Which reminds me, I need to check my emails for some follow ups to some rather amusing questions yeah notification of payment well, that's okay because that came to me money is good I accept money always where's my mobile phone iPhone 4 won't turn on what solution you got it facing the wrong direction See, it's a not a well-known fact that, see, people get their iPhone 4s and they're holding them the wrong way. And so, you know, they see the back of the iPhone. All you got to do is get them to turn it around and then, boom, it works. See, easy. Very common fault. Yeah. And yes, shock horror, I use an iPhone. It's an iPhone 7 Plus in this case. And I may change to an iPhone XR. I'm not sure. No, I've got one here. Toss it in the bin. No thanks. I did have an Android phone and I tossed that in the bin. I had a um, Samsung Galaxy Note. And then I had a Samsung Galaxy S4 and a 5. And I just... I got sick of them in the end. I got sick of the fact that every time it did an update, it would run like 10% slower every time. And there was nothing you could do to wind it back. Is the battery completely dead? No, the battery actually seems to be fully charged, which seems about right because I tested this battery in another machine a couple of about a week ago. There was a couple of A1466s that I was repairing. Um, there was a problem with the ISL and there was a problem with the SMC. I think it was only a week ago actually, and this was the battery that I used to test it. Hey, welcome back, Travis. So this legitimately is a fully charged battery. Let's see if Wi-Fi works. Let's just turn Wi-Fi on. Uh, it's not going to pick up any networks because I haven't actually connected the cables. Pardon me. Dabarishi Barman. Nothing is really happening. We're just testing this board here because it's sitting in my parts I might be able to use box. It's the sort of thing where you think you've repaired something and um, if someone, say, comes in with a board that's too damaged to bother repairing, like it's got too much liquid damage on it and too many points have been corroded out and then you think it's just, well, it's easier to just do a board swap for them and I tested this board a week or so ago and it came up giving me Thunderbolt uh, lane issues and now I'm testing it again and it's nothing we've only got the one voltage error on it and we don't even know if that's legit yet Yeah, you know, so that's the problem, Winfield. You know, you've got to go the customer OS route. So in the end, I just gave up. I got my hands on an iPhone 6, yeah, 6S Plus, and I was fine with that. It just, it worked. Even the small things, like when you go to dial a number or you want to use the calculator, and no matter which Android I got, 
for the most part. You'd be sitting there waiting 10 seconds or 5 seconds for that app to come up or for the keyboard to initially respond. And all those little niggly, lagging things just eventually accumulate, make you lose your mind, and then you go and buy an iPhone. It's the iPhone gives you that contentment if you don't really care about the internals. You just want to pick it up, do what you got to do, not have to worry about which variant of the operating system you got most of the time. It just works. Sorry, but it, I mean, I'm as technical as most of the people who hate Apple. I mean, I've been doing my own electronics. I've used to uh, run Slackware, Linux. I've never really been a big fan of Windows, all that sort of stuff. But I've got to say, yeah, the iPhones and the MacBooks, they just, they work for me. Um, it's probably me stuttering. I don't think I can trust this board. This is definitely a no-trust board. I can't possibly imagine why it would come up Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt Lane issue. And that was on the 4th of May, so 20 days ago. I still test this genuine charge to see if the VPOR. All right, well, we can do that. I do have one, mind you, that's a, um, it's an 85 watt one. Let's see if I've got a, I don't think I've got a smaller one around here. A functioning one, that is. Let's see what I've got. I've got one that's got a chewed out cable. That might work. Hey Jimbo, how's it going? Ah, I just realised, um, Jim's not here. No, I hope he's okay. Might have been because I was a bit late. Shit, it's two o'clock in the morning? Holy hell, yeah, okay. Yeah, this is genuine Mac quality cable. So, yeah. This should run with me disconnecting this momentarily. Let's see if this even boots. Oh, it does. There we go. Alright, stop the testing. Tell it to stop on failure. Start testing. Let's see what happens. So this is with a 65 watt. Yeah, it looks like it did pass that one, I think. No, it did not. Ho oh, ho. Oh. No, it failed. And that's on a 65 watt brick. So, yeah, there's definitely something wrong with that. Because we tried it at 18 volts, we tried it at 16.5 volts, we tried it on a genuine MagSafe 65 watt unit and still doing it. Alrighty. Shut down. Have a look at that board and have a look at those at that area. And see what voltage it is given out. It would have been nice if it reported what it thought it was getting as a voltage. Like in the SMC. So we'll have a look at that. Oh no, get out of here. This is a very poor use of time by the way. There's a lot of other things I should be doing with this sort of time. Uh, making more toasted ham cheese sandwiches, that would be awesome. 
SMC looks like it's had some work done to it already. Whether it's been replaced, I do not know. Dun, 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 dun. It could just be another bad SMC for all I know. What was that? Damn it, what was that power reading? P. Uh, PCR or PVR? Oh. Damn it. PCR. Oh. No. Damn. I'll recognize if I see it, but that's a lot of pages for me to jump through. Ah, here we go. VPOR. You're all very completely useless. Too late. Too late. Already found it, Enrico. But thank you. Ah, uh, 5503. Okay, so R5503 is just around this area here. Okay, so I guess we'll plug in our... MagSafe and everything, and we will see what value we do have coming up and see if that is actually legitimately out of bounds or whether it's just the SMC having a bad day. Come on. Powering up. Okay, Paul, catch you later. What's on top of the SMC? It's probably a piece of junk. Yeah, it's just a piece of flux, that's all. Okay, so this here is the test pad for it. Let's see what we read. 1.5, that's actually pretty low, I think. Yeah, that's running about half what I would expect. I'm just going to put 18 volts in and see what comes up. So yeah, that's definitely lower than what I would expect. I might have to get another board just to double check, but I'm pretty sure that should be a bit higher. We'll get the math out in a second. It's doing the up, down, up, down because it's booting at the moment. Yeah, it seems like it's obsessed with 1.58. No, 1.51. Okay. Let's see, Paul needs a pen and he needs a piece of paper. Actually, now that makes. Does that make sense? Hey, Terrible Fire, how's it going? Been a while. How's things going with your Amiga boards? Are you still doing that? Or have you created a brand new Amiga by now? 
Okay, Flatlander 2. Okay, that's G3 hot. Yeah, now that I think about it, it actually is about the right. Because PV bus G3 hot sits at 8 point, let's call it 8.6. And we have a 27k4 going into a 5k49. So 8 volts. Let me use the calculator because I'm too slow in the head. So, so the total sum of those, clear, 27.4, 27.4 plus 5.49, 32.89. And so we should see here, actually it's easier if we do it this way. We go um, eight point six divided by thirty two point eight nine times five point four nine point four nine. Okay, well actually we should be seeing one point four volts, but we're only seeing one point one five. So we are a little low. Question is why? I guess the easiest thing to do we'll just make sure we are getting the right voltage up the top section there. And if we are getting the right voltage, then we could either have there's a couple of things. We can either have a bad divider resistor or we've got the SMC is imposing a load on that network causing it to be dragged down further. Okay, so this will be the input. It should be 8.5 or so. Once it boots. Once it boots. Where is that the ground? That, that was the ground. Okay. 8.5 Oh, I was wrong. Okay, no, it should be right then. Thanks. Thanks, Drew. Just noticed that. So that is within margin of error. So I'd say that our SMC is probably a bit dodgy. Guess we'll have to just replace it. 34, 37? Eh, we've got enough of them. We can do it. Hey Claire Roberts, how are you? What do you say? We do an SMC at two thirty in the morning. Why not? Why the frick not? My heat is excited. I'd be more excited if I could find my proper tweezers. Yeah, oh, they're out. Hey, Toltec Merc. Mm. Well, there's probably going to be enough flux hanging around under there. All right, I'll give it a little more. Just so I don't oxidize the pads too much, you know, that kind of stuff. Everybody loves an SMC. I will keep this aside just in case, you know, just in case it um, is not that fault. Like we put a new SMC on there and the same thing happens. 
Let him go, well, that was some time of our life we wasted, but hey, at least we know. I'm just gradually pulling tools out of the little container that I threw everything into when I was rearranging my desk. Thanks Richard Moore. Hello by the way. Now these will already be leaded balls so I can just go ahead and do this with no real repercussions. Give it a clean up. That's pretty good. Looks like it's ready to go. What I will do is just check the continuity between the pad that does take the so take the resistance. So we're going to measure the continuity between this pad here and... And... Oh man, where do you go? That one there. That doesn't seem right, I must have the wrong one. <laughs> it seems a little way off the mark. Ah, it's the outer edge one. Whoops. So it was this one. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Alright, now we've got to find ourselves a replacement SMC. Thirty-four, thirty-seven with an SMC. Mm. Yeah, come on, we'll do you. You are a replacement from before, but that's okay. I know that the fault on this board is most likely not SMC related. It was most likely PCH internal failure or board failure so I may as well make good of the fact that I did extract an SMC from another board and use it again Hey Pernov, how's it going? Don't normally expect you on this late, but then I'm not normally here this late. Probably going to regret this in the morning, but oh well. I'll try to clean it up away from there so I can just put it straight in. Hey TCRS, how's it going? I was talking about you earlier. Oh, that's right, I was talking to... Someone mentioned the fact that all the techs seem to have cats and I said, well, Tim's got dog and he loves his dog. So not everybody is necessarily a cat. Come on. 
Oh, I feel I'm going to regret this. Yeah, that looks good. Let that cool down for a smidge. Off the yeah, we'll just do the clean up routine. Fine, clean up the stencil because I always forget to clean the stencil. Normally, what I'd do is I'd put the stencil straight into a container of alcohol with all my other stencils but I've been using the SMC this tray so much lately that I just sort of leave it in here and since I'm not using paste it doesn't really get as um, it doesn't get as ugly as when you use paste using balls seems to keep it pretty clean Yeah, that's pretty good. Stick a SMC in. Now we do have to stick a couple of corner balls on so that our stencil will fit. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it's a little gnarly compared to what I would like, but I'm going to go with it. I need to get the hair off my tweezers. There's a hair stuck in that ball. That is that was terrifying. Stick the stencil on. I'll flip this one upside down. Get rid of that because that's going to cause troubles. Good. Oh, now we can pour our little sachet of psycho balls onto it. Waiting for the explosion when it was calling what? What explosion? Yeah, I've obviously missed something there. Not easy getting these over the threshold. Ah, uh, what I can use. Unfortunately, I do not have a scalloped spatula, so even if I try to use this spatula, it's yeah. See, so they're not going to come out that way. Actually, maybe they will. The stream is all about making me look like an idiot tonight. I will say one thing. And the opposite happens. I'm not going to get a million dollars tonight. Let's see if that works. Mm. 
Now these balls are starting to get a little bit less than ideal to use because they're picking up bits of crap from wherever they've been hanging out. Probably seedy little bars and goodness knows where. Yeah, I can see there's one or two still attached there. I just need to get my surgical knife. That's not a surgical knife. It's a model hobbyist knife. Big difference. I could have used that ball. It needs to go into there. Damn it. That's everything. Sorry, it's time picking a focus there. Alright, so I'm just going to heat them up till they deform. Yeah, they're starting to deform. And then we hit them with a water flux. Okay, we made one pull out. Let's try to get that back in. There we go. Sometimes they just grab onto the flux if it's getting a bit cold. And once again we've got a few reluctance. So we'll just give them a bit of a stab and they often come back. There we go, those two jumped on nice. That one down there needs a bit of work. Yep. No, I think we're good. Oh wait, no. Nope two there. Flipping egg, the whole stencil's jumping around. There we go. Okay, they're good.
Yeah, uh, Tim, I know what you mean. It's it's like you have to have too many things within your direct proximity, like around you, and there's just no way you can do it. So I've, I'm in exactly the same situation. It's almost like you need to have a um, complete U-shaped desk wrapped around you with only the exit, or heck, even better yet, just have it like a fire pole where you ascend or descend into your desk place. Yeah, let's grab this delightful chip. It's going to have to go on that way. Put down a bit of flux. Once again, as always, not too much because I don't like floaters. There's a bit of hair on that, but that's okay. I can't stand it when my SMCs start floating away. Because basically once they've done that, then you pretty much have to do it again, in most cases. Some days you just don't get the feel for where the pads are. Like I feel like I'm blind there. I'm getting real sick of these little hairs on the end of everything. I think I'm just going to have to trust it. Uh, famous words, yeah. Right, here we go. There's a bit of junk there that I want to get rid of. This is probably going to play silly buggers with me. It's going to sort of slide maybe two or three times. Because I put flux on the underside and reballed it, you see now that that flux has just dropped out from the underside of the chip. Okay, there's the first slide. Oh, it looks like it's only going to do a one slide. Okay. My bad. The whole opposites theme happening still tonight, and I still don't have my million dollars. Ah, uh, Steve K, believe me, it's not them. They don't get into this workshop, but um, it's just the air in general. They sold a 25. It looks good enough to me. There's a that second one on the left looks a little iffy, but given that everything else is good, I think I will take my chance. Yeah, everything else looks good. Wow, well, camera shot doesn't. Yeah. Now, overall, the reason why I don't use balls, I uh, don't use paste for this. Is, I mean, I used to always do paste on the. There's a, quite a few videos of me 
actually having a paste off challenge mind you that was a CE3250 anyway I, I've done paste on the SMC's plenty of times but I found over time that using the, the balls gives me more consistent results at this point in time maybe when I have a full jig set up and I can just simply squeegee paste onto these um, SMC's guarantee you know, consistent every time then I might change back to paste but for now I've got a quarter of a million balls I need to use them and it's just as quick for me either way it, I'm not taking any longer to do it this way than I am any other way the success rate first time with balls is higher I don't really ever have to redo um, a job when I've done it with balls Whereas it's not unusual to have to redo paste ones. Come on, in you go. I don't know why I'm bothering to put the camera in there, but I am. No crossbar. Hey, Southwest Kitty. Yeah, I'll spill them once, come on. I mean, in terms of major spill, like Exxon oil spill type level, just the ones. Hey, Mal, Yanko, did you see Windows is going to directly support Linux kernel, including Ubuntu? No, I'm not surprised. I mean, over the last 10 or 15 years, they have been adding progressively more and more Linux support sort of probably in the hopes of ingesting Linux and then maybe their long-term plan is to actually do a um, switcheroo and make it that their Windows itself is actually running on a Linux kernel I know it sounds kind of crazy but I don't know kind of seen crazier things coming out of Bill Gates just uh, it's Steve Barmer rather and that's not just tossing chairs Here we go. Do you replace reprogram EFR chips? I do at times, uh, I just not a lot. I've got one board that I have to do a complete replacement on. Hey, six skills. Okay, one, two, three, four. Let's see how this goes. Uh, right now I'm having an absolute nightmare getting the USB drivers to work for the FLIR camera because FLIR doesn't produce Windows drivers for the FLIR 1 Pro. And I understand why, because it's not marketed as a Windows device, it's an Android phone device. But We're trying to make it work. It works with Linux just fine, so why not um, Windows? So we're going to see if we get the VPOR. Stockholm's is on it. I think VPOR. No, we failed again. Great, we replaced an SMC for no good reason. That's interesting. I wonder why it's failing that. Yeah, that is actually very interesting. I wonder what it's expecting. Hmm. Oh, it does actually say reading above the alarm point. Uh, why didn't I read that earlier? 
crap. All right. Oh, we got the board that we worked on last night. Shut down. Well, congratulations. We replaced an SMC for no good reason. We used to know the other one's good. Fair enough, that is correct. And we do get a value that is about right. It is fractionally higher than what I would have calculated, but I don't know what the margin of error is. So I'm just going to write on here 3437 SMC. Good. At least it was good when we removed it. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to check this board that we worked on last night and see if it gives the same issue. Oh man, I'm pulling stuff off from that. Still have the battery active there. Silly things you do. Check for your best G3 hot voltage. Voltage. Yeah, I did pound off. Yep, it was like 1.51. By my calculations, it should have been 1.43. So we could have a resistor going slightly high. I should have checked that before I did the whole SMC replacement, but I gotta admit, I just got carried away. Yeah, we're gonna use this. We know this board works. And we're gonna see what we actually get out of this as a reading and compare it. Oh, that's a little high. Come on down, come on down, come on down, come on down. There we go. Voltage. Really, this is a 165, but it shouldn't make any difference. Okay, this is 1.44. So the margin of error, and that would be off 8.5 as well. Where are we going? Over here. Yeah, 8.6. Okay, so maybe we do have a resistor going slightly funky. I'm just going to pull this board out that you can't see me doing. Just think of it like a magic trick. You don't see what I'm really doing behind the scenes. But my fault, I should have checked those resistors right from the start. It's okay. Come to think of it. No, we're good. Okay, so we're going to rotate those two resistors off, measure them, and see how they compare to what they should be. What's the bit that they're probably fine, but maybe there's a bit of corrosion, I don't know. I just saw that one shift. Tell me I'm wrong. I just saw that shift.
whether you think corona is hyped or not really tends to depend on whether you've contracted it in a bad way or not. 27.3, 27.4, that's within, that's within margin. Okay, that resistor is high. This here, that should be reading 5.49 and it's reading 5.73. So that is actually high. The resistor is at fault in this case. And that's a very subtle fault, to be honest. 5.73 versus 5.4. That's around about 5% high. Interesting. Now, uh, that's actually said the wrong way around. The common cold is a kind of corona is of the coronavirus family, but the corona CV19 is not the common cold. I think the bigger problem with the corona is that we don't understand well enough what it's doing in this instance. It's affecting our bodies and our immune systems in ways that we have not experienced with normal previous coronavirus events. And that's the real problem, is we don't know exactly what we're dealing with. And I can guarantee you, if we just sort of go, well, look, you know, some people are going to die, fine, we understand. That. I mean, it happens to influenza. But if you get a reasonable percentage of the population going through and getting corona, and then we find out that there's some long-term chronic ailment that's associated with it because of this particular variant, and that we just basically let everyone into it, and yeah, you're going to have a fairly upset population and they're going to do the usual things, which is like, why didn't the government stop us? So the government's going to lose either way. So at least this way, then it's better for them to be wrong and go, oh, well, you know, it didn't turn out to be as bad as we thought. How bad? And so what, you get upset the government, but at least you still have your health. Anyway, I'm um, content to be sitting where I am with isolation because it's pretty much like normal daily life for me here but yeah the, the real problem is we just don't yet have a good idea of exactly what it's up to why it's doing these strange things like causing spontaneous um, clotting and all that sort of stuff if it was sticking to the usual path of being a respiratory distress issue, then yeah, I mean, we'd probably be overhyping it. But right now, because we don't know what the hell it's doing, um, I think it's probably worth waiting it out just a little bit longer. Uh, DJ Rob William, no, I don't have a polarizer. This is just a straight 0 0.7, 0 0.7 uh, barlow. That's it. That's all I've got on here. I just think I hate that it's all made inconsistent. I think the inconsistencies are probably more coming from second-hand or third-hand interpretations of the information. People want to know what's going on and they want to know a lot of details, but at this stage of it, it's hard to get those details, but people want to know. So you just start making speculations and then speculations become facts without evidence and it just sort of spirals out of control. And that is what's happening here. It's basically just spiraling out of control, which is exactly what happens when humans don't get information. I mean, I get it, the economy is suffering, but in another way, it's also rebirthing the economy too, in ways. Test the resistor, why would I want to do that? Yes, no, that's, that is a bad, I was going to do it, but then I was already in the process of habitually transferring it. There we go. Yeah, so that's more like a 5.5. Yeah, 
I'm not a, I'm not a person that buys into conspiracy theories much. Um, some people call me a fence sitter, but I really prefer to get a lot more information in before actually making a declaration of things. It's very easy to make conspiracy theories seem legit, much the same way that you can look up at the, uh, yeah, the night sky or random dots on a piece of paper and draw an outline and say, look, it's a fish. Because you don't have enough information there to truly see what it is. And when you're dealing with something that's like this, yeah, it's, like I said, I'd rather err on the side of caution. Imagine if they did this back when... Yeah, imagine if they just got all flippant about things like HIV and whatnot. I mean, at the end of the day, no one's going to convince you one way or another. That's up to you to decide. I'm just saying, well, everyone's got an opinion, and in this case, most of us are not qualified or experts in any way, shape, or form. So, what we think and say pretty much is worth jack shit. So, not much point getting all hyped up about it. Now, what we do know about are MacBook boards, and hopefully, we fix this one. That's what matters in this particular channel. Yeah, I think it's probably time. If you want to keep talking about COVID-19 crap and all that, you can go and take a hike. Because that's not really what I want to be chatting about on this channel. I know it's a, wor it's a relevant world issue, but come on. We've got other things to do here. Go find a group that supports your personal bias and enjoy the echo chamber. Seriously, keep talking about COVID-19. Just mods can just feel free to take a ban to people. I'm really not interested in it. Okay, so we should have 1.4 something. And it would help if I actually put it on resistance mode. I mean voltage mode. There we go, we're back to 1.44. So we've got it. Which reminds me, I need to make more mods. I think also a lot of people come in from just random places looking to stir crap that actually aren't here for board repairs or anything like that. I blame Lewis Rossman. He's the one stirring all this crap. Do I have proof of that? No. But it seems pretty legit. He was going on and about it the other day. Wait, I'm falling into my own trap here. I need to just shut up and get on with the work here. Okay, so we're going to plug this in, run the ASD, and hopefully we should be all in the clear now. That was a very subtle fault, that one. I've been getting a couple of these lately, and that kind of annoys me. I prefer the faults that hit you like a brick or a piece of 4B2. These subtle ones can be quite the trick to find. I should be happy, though, that we are finding them. So now we should be fine to run this 18 volts and not have any squawks. Okay, I just want to get my finger on the right button in the dark. Yeah, 
If you want to know if schematic is available for Lenovo, ThinkPad, Thunderbolt 3, Doctype, 40 Ace, and oh god, try badcaps.net forum. Badcaps is about the best place you can get your board views and schematics. <laughs> There we go. Let's go for our fourth one again. He's probably in his office watching and laughing. Yes, quite likely. He doesn't have much else to do in his life other than just rant and push people around, fire people. He's becoming a bit trumpy, you know? He probably calls in all his staff every day gets the rundown of what they've been doing and looks at one of them and says you're fired and they go running out crying and most days it's probably Kopaz but he comes back because Kobad, Kopaz is tenacious like that okay start testing hey Alan Fleckney more kittens born on my, oh my, yeah. VPOR leads to WOPR problem in the end. What? No thanks. There we go, VPOR just went past. I saw it there. All good. There it is. It's within range. Well, that was subtle. That was really, really subtle. You get a five point. Um, basically a 5.5k resistor that becomes a 5.7k resistor. That's not a big shift. don't even know why it did that. But it obviously did. Yeah. Alright, maybe this board won't be so intermittent anymore. I just kind of wonder whether that would lead to the intermittent behaviour or... Yeah. I'm just not sure how the SMC would react overall in terms of what it manages with the rest of the board based on if it felt like it had a excessively high voltage coming in on the PP bus. That is a mystery. 0.07, no, it was a 0.3, was it? 0.44 to point, okay, yeah, no, it was 70 millivolts, yeah. So not much at all. Not a lot. I mean, that's within normal wiggle noise values on some bad power supplies. Okay, that's it going to sleep. It's just doing a normal test. Nobody panic. Tony McPants. I don't know if I'd trust it yet. What I'll probably do is what I was saying the other night, where I'll take the board, put it into one of the machines that I use on a daily basis, um, use it for a few months and if it passes without any complications or any weird hiccups then I will consider it as a suitable board for customer replacement if there's no other option. So um, it's got a fair bit of testing ahead of it. Those resistors would have been the next thing I would have checked. I should have checked them right away when I was complaining but the trouble is when I did the math quickly and it was only a 70, you know, a 70 millivolt difference between what I calculated versus what I was reading. I was like, yeah, it's probably not that sensitive, but clearly I was wrong. Uh, Christian, they're all 1% resistors. I don't think getting 5% resistors now would probably actually cost you more than getting the 1% metal film ones. But yeah, they're all 1% metal film these days. It's been a long time since I've seen 5% resistors around the place. Yeah, Tom, in this case, it's a voltage divider. So by having the two resistors, it sort of like cuts the you know, ratio divider. And then you get this uh, measurement out that's proportional to the measurement in. Very handy little devices. Or constructs, rather. Okay, this is going back to sleep. Wait for it to come back up. What's the percentage on the voltage making the difference? Uh, let's see, so 70 millivolts across, that's, that's less than 
And that's why I was like, meh. So 8.5 volt, oh, 0.07 divided by 8.5, yeah, it's less than 1%. So it's within resistor tolerance, but it wasn't that uh, resistor we pulled out. That was 5.7, that was out of tolerance. So a 5.49 resistor times 1.01, it at best should have only measured up to five and a half, five point five four, but that was five point seven, so that was well out of spec. So five point seven, so so two hundred ohms. Uh, let's see, so we go two hundred ohm, uh, point two divided by five point five. So that was 3% out of spec. Uh, Tony W, what happened is we had uh, one of, the, there's four strays that are hanging around here and we're trying to um, socialize them. They decided they wanted to get into the house or into the property. And so they were coming in over the enclosure fence because I built the enclosure fences to stop owls getting out, but other animals or cats can come in because there's no obstruction for them and so yeah they were coming in jumping over the roof getting into the yard and of course we're worried about that because you can't you don't know what diseases the stray cats obviously have and owls obviously live a fairly sheltered life so we you know we don't want them catching things and there's some pretty bad diseases out here there's feline aids there's feline leukemia there's cat flu um, oh, there's a whole bunch of things that they can share between each other. And as it is, ours have already in the past, twice now, been infected with something by strays as they fought through the fence. And I've stopped that by putting up a plastic barrier on the first sort of four foot of the fence. But, you know, it's, it's a constant battle. Yeah, this is going good. Now, I've never tried a GoPro mic. At least with a GoPro, you... Yeah, yeah. If you can see physical damage, like a blown capacitor or something cracked or something, you might have a chance. Beyond that, yeah, it's, it's a bit difficult. Axis lost two cats to feel on HIV. Sorry to hear that, Axis. It's not nice, I know. We had a close call last year, almost a year ago now. We had a, a beautiful big black panther cat. I mean, when he came to us, he was just skin and bone. And by the time, well, a year ago, he was well and truly plush. Um, we had thoughts of integrating him in with our group, but it never really got around to that. And one night he got out because we were prepping for something else. Um, and it was a hell of a jump that he made. It was crazy, in fact. And he broke his canine tooth. He's, he only had uh, one, and he broke that one. And so we took him to the vet to get that sorted out, and the vet told us that you know he had um, feline um, AIDS. And unfortunately, at that point, we were being pushed into half of this house that I'm in now, and we were completely squeezed for room. And he was a fairly old cat, and we'd been looking after him for a year and a bit. Um, unfortunately, we made the choice that we decided, well, you know, he's got feline AIDS, he's old, we don't have anywhere to look after him. Um, he probably will start showing symptoms in a few months. And at that time, we chose to put him down. It, it's never easy putting the animals down, never is. But I gotta say of all the times that, it's a weird way of saying it, but that kind of felt like the warmest send off we could get with him because he was already still under from the um, operation for getting his tooth sorted out. And yeah, so you know, we, we gave him a few pats and yeah, obviously we cried a fair bit. But um, in terms of ways to go, that was probably one of the nicer 
ways it went about, um, particularly too that the night before I'd spent quite a lot of time with him, playing with him, things like that, and he was happy. It's like I said, it's never nice, but yeah, when they get feline aids, it's it's always rough. Yeah, solder. It's um, feline aids is quite rampant, to be honest. One thing that I'm worried about that's going to be start making its way up from the south is um, feline parvo virus. Um, we have canine parvo here, and it is very bad in this region. And now we're starting to see instances of feline parvo coming up from Melbourne, Sydney areas. It probably won't be too long before it eventually gets up here. Um, that's going to be very tricky to deal with. Yeah, it's sad, but as you said, yes, it was the best thing under the circumstances. And like I said, in terms of putting an animal down, that was about the warmest sort of way we could do it. It didn't feel... It wasn't something that really sort of cut us as much to the core. There have been other events that have left us really cut up, devastated for a long time. It still does. Um, you know it's the only sort of option available. And you hate sort of using that term option because it kind of means, well, like, you know, they're just an object or something like that, an inconvenience. But you sort of have the choice of do you, um, no one's going to look after these animals. They're likely going to starve. Um, yeah, it, it's hard because everything that is alive generally wants to stay alive. If given a choice, it will opt to hope for the best um, and fight to survive, even in spite of the worst conditions that it's enduring. So, um, yeah, it's very difficult. And then when you throw yourself into their mindset, you ca that makes it harder to do that sort of thing. Yeah, it's rough. And it's the hard thing about trying to do animal rescue and things like that is that for all for every good story there's probably three or four bad ones that you just don't hear about because it, it's rough um you know there's just so many animals out there like dogs cats that aren't don't have homes they're not gonna have a great life um it's not a good ending yeah Had to put one down, I saw by the side of the road a couple of years, cried like a child. Yeah, what? What the hell is the vet life nature for? No way, that sounds like a bad vet. Our vets are nothing like that. We have got fantastic vets, really good vets. Vets that understand the humanitarian side of this sort of thing. We have had some bad ones, um, but the ones we found now, they, are, they genuinely understand what it's like. So yeah, that you get some people that they get, they become vets not because the love of animals, but just more like they just, it's, um, I don't know how to describe it. But anyway, I can totally understand and believe the statistic that more vets are the highest suicide um, victims out there, or at least I believe so. And I can completely understand that. I mean, you imagine spending your life, you're, you're trying to save animals, yet you spend most of your time having to put them down. Uh, Prater, I'm really sorry to hear that. 16 years, five... I mean, the money doesn't even come into it, really. I mean, yeah, it does hurt a bit to pay that kind of money, but you still do it, yeah. Uh, Australia does have a lot of feral cats. There's a difference between, say, um, stray cats, which are more like one generation removed domestic or maybe uh, were domestic and they've just been turfed out. That's stray cats. As opposed to feral cats, which grew up in the wild. They're like massive creatures. Um, they're strong and they will shred you. There's no two ways about it. Um, they're a completely different beast to your stray cats in general. So, yeah. I mean, yep, they're both cats. They're both felines um, from household cats, but just, yeah, they're a massively different creature. Really are.
probably hit back. Yeah, it's that that's really sad. I'm sorry that happened to you. This looks like it's probably going to pass just fine. So fancy that one resistor. Now you imagine how many faults there are, or faulty boards or machines there are out there that have one part like that that has gone just slightly out of spec. Not enough out of spec to completely fail, but just slightly. That they're the sort of boards that you um, that Paul S probably ends up with a lot of, and sometimes you can track it down, but it's a lot of hard work and. Even with MacBooks having as good resale value as they do, the fact that you can get a replacement board for these sort of uh, A1466s, 15 for 200 $300 now, really narrows down the amount of time that you can really truly afford to spend on trying to repair them. So a lot of them now are probably getting turfed into the donor board piles simply because they've got something like that one little resistor gone out of spec and it's just not worth chasing it down. Held off as long as we could. It was getting difficult for her. She would bring... Oh, man. Yeah. Well, I'm, to, I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, I know you would have done the best you could, and I know that would not have been at all an easy thing to do. And, um, no, I mean, I completely understand. And I hate it when people do look at you and laugh at you as if to go, well, what are you talking about? It's just a cat, or it's just a dog, you know. Funny enough, they don't do it so much with just a dog. A lot of more people understand the how attached you can get to a dog, um, especially because dogs are very expressive in their bond towards the humans. I mean, they're bred that way too. But um, you know, a lot of people who sit on the outside when it comes to cats don't understand that even though a cat tends to be a lot more aloof or um, a lot less loving towards you, so to speak, as it were, um, the psychology with cats is very different, but the bond is still just as strong. And so, you know, you get these people that are really flippant about it. You just want to, like, rip their necks off because they don't understand. Not to mention that you usually, unfortunately, you lose dogs, like, 10 or 8 to 14 years. With cat, anything up to 30 years, yeah, that's a lot of history you are losing. What's a donor board? A donor board is a board that um, you can't really fix, so you use it to provide parts for some other board that you can fix. Yep. I work in food safety and working with the vet. He says he probably couldn't work with small animals; was too depressing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It takes a very special kind of mindset to persevere through it. I can understand why vet industry um, vets are uh, mostly women um, because they can cope with that perhaps a little better I don't know to be sure it's got to be a damned hard job though I mean yeah it's hard enough looking after humans on the medical field and then you've got to deal with cats dogs fish birds cattle horses sheep snakes birds yeah all these different animals that have completely different physiologies and you got to know how to deal with them all. Yeah. My cat is like a dog, walks with me always, loves to go outside, bring him in with trash can noise, plastic worms, no bring him in with trash can noise. <laughs> yes, um, owls, like every night we go to sleep, they all come in. Um, now we've got one and he just, he snuggles, like he will get into the nook of your arm and yeah, snuggles up. If he decides to go out and he comes back a bit later or whatever, he will uh, face smush into you to make you roll over a bit so then get back in and snuggle with you. I mean, yeah. They're definitely not uh, creatures that ignore you or anything. When the machines are new, the tolerances are high, but after a few years, you used to tend to lose their tolerance. Uh, when iffy components start, to yeah, the overall envelope, operating envelope, shrinks over time, and you have a higher risk of something occurring that's outside of the operational envelope, and then you start getting your failures. Yep. Oh, seriously, come on. Are we going to wait for this to finish, or 
what are we up to? Memory test. I guess we'll we'll just wait for this to finish and I'll yabble on a bit more. I wonder if Rob Brown's awake. Should the, the poor bastard. I've got him doing some work for me. Well, he offered to do work. That was his first mistake. Um, uh, you're... What's going on? Got it working, thanks for help. Okay, cool. No. Um, damn it, where is my Discord? No, 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 not no, oh, flip's sake. Yeah, you know, I just want to see if he's awake because he stayed up way too late last night trying to fix up my issue. And no luck today either. No, looks like he's still asleep. Poor bastard. And I have lost the chat window. <laughs> but me. Can I download the AST? I don't know exactly where to get it from. It's around the ASD files. The only trouble with the ASDs, um, of course, is that beyond 2014 or 13, it doesn't really work anymore. Do the BIOS MacBook? I'm not going to because I don't have all the stuff I need and I have definitely packed away the programmer at this point. Oh, come on, man. No, I think I'm going to just walk it off because it's 3.30 in the morning. I really should be going to bed. So we're going to leave it at that. This is obviously going to be just fine. 3.30 in the morning, I am well and truly way over my um, bedtime. So <coughs> you can hear it in my voice. I'm just cracking down. So I'll um, sign off. Thank you all for sticking around for this bit of a long, boring one. But it was nice to actually catch that sort of fault, that subtlety fault. But, um, yeah, thankfully we did have the ASD to tell us that there was something wrong. We should have trusted it, but I guess sometimes you just assume that it's always the SMC when it comes to these sort of things. So, all right, I'll catch you all later. You all take care. Be good. If you can't be good, be good at it. And I'll see you next time.